Hello again, here we are to continue with our game, and last episode we created some coins that appear on the screen, gave them physics properties, and when our player object runs into a coin, it's recognized down here and we see a, um, you know, a callback down here in the, uh, well there's a coin, we'll go grab that one. Oh, I missed it, but uh, anyway, we see a message down here, right? Okay, so what other kinds of objects might we create? And we'll just go through the whole process again of creating new objects um, in the same way we did with the coin, right? But it'll be a little faster and it'll be a little bit of a review. So what other kinds of objects can we create? Well, we can create objects that if the player runs into them, the player dies. So they'd be deadly objects, right? Maybe like spikes or something, right? Or flaming pits or I don't know what, right? So why don't we create one of those? So let's kind of go through this um, you know, from end to end, right? And we'll review all of the uh, physics stuff, okay? So the first thing we need is we need to check our physics categories, right? And so we've got these categories here, um, none, player, ground, and coin. And maybe we need another physics category here. We'll call it, um, let me delete this here, right? We'll call it static. Maybe we'll call this a deadly object. Okay, so uh, it'll be a uint32, and you know what I'm going to do here, I think, is I'm going to line these guys all up like this. And we'll just make that read a little better, right? And then maybe we'll make this guy a 0b1000, and that would make it a something like that, right? Okay, and this was left over from our discussion. But anyway, notice everybody again has a one in only one of the columns, and we can have up to 32 different categories, and pretty much each column here represents a category. Okay, so there we go. We got deadly objects. Okay, um, now let's make a deadly object. Okay, um, why don't we make a new um, Swift file? We'll call it deadly class. And this could be anything, right? It could be spikes. We could have different kinds of deadly objects. This will just be our basic deadly class, right? So we'll make it sprite kit class deadly. We'll subclass SK sprite node. And then um, what are we going to do here? Why don't we give this guy an initializer? Right, And now, depending on how we're going to use this, you might want to pass something in to say what kind of deadly object this is. I'm just going to make this a rectangle, and it might be a random size and position. Okay, so it'll be something that we have to avoid. Later, we can come back and make it something more interesting. Um, and remember, if we're going to subclass SK Sprite node, we need to... Uh, use the designated initializer, or we, or we need to call the designated initializer from super. So um, we're not using any textures yet, so we'll set that to nil. I think deadly objects are always the red color, right? And the size can be some size. Why don't we make a random size here, right? Why don't we make it, um, how about let width equal... I don't know, um, how about uh, CG float uh, arc for random, let's make it, um, I don't know, we'll do like 10 times 20. No wait, that would be up to 200 pixels wide, that might be too wide. Let's, let's make it a little too big. Let's make it um, about uh, 4, and then let's add 40. So it's at least 40 pixels wide and up to 60. So it would be 40 to 100, something like that. And then, um, oops, wait a, there we go, right? And then we'll say, you know, let height equal, and you know, why don't we just make the height the same thing, 
I don't know, right? Something like that. And then we got to set a size here. So let's say let, you know, um, how about, uh, um, size equals CG size. You should be a little careful because size is a property of SK sprite node. So if we declare size here, we'll be overwriting or, you know, or blocking out the class size. Well, I guess we can still get that from self. So I think we're okay. So let's see, let's do width and height. Okay. And then we can put um, size here. Okay, and then our guy is initialized, right? Um, this is going to warn us that we need to have in it with coder, so let's put that in. And then as a good coding practice, we should put a mark in here to let us know, you know, what this area of our code is. And if we go to the menu here, we'll be able to see the in it mark up there, right? Okay, and then maybe we need to set up this sprite node once it's created, so let's add a setup method. And then down here... We'll say, you know, mark, you know, setup. And then we'll say uh, function setup. You know, we can do all our setup stuff down here. And then the setup will show up on the menu. So if we need to find the initializers or the setup, it's easy to do, right? Okay, so, um, so what are we going to do with setup? Well, we got to give this guy a physics body, right? So he's got to have an SK physics body. And uh, let's make it a rectangle of size, and we'll just set it to our size. This will be the size that belongs to the, the SK sprite node, not the size here, but actually this is the same size because we set it as a size. So it's going to be the same number, but don't get it confused with this variable because that's a different, different variable, right? Um, so anyway, there's our size right there, and now we've got a physics body. Um, let's set a couple properties. Now, this is going to be a static object, so let's set the dynamic property to um, false. I like to use the exclamation point there, because remember, physics body is an optional, because you might try and create a physics body here, and this maybe doesn't return a value or, you know, you forgot to set the physics body, or by default, the sprite doesn't have a physics body, though it has a property for it. So this is optional. So, you know, we need to unwrap it in some way. I'm going to use the exclamation point because if it fails, I want to know about it. If it has the question mark there and the physics body fails, then I won't get an error, but I won't have a physics body. So, um, so I won't have any, you know, nothing telling me that there's a problem here. Of course, this will crash my program if there's no physics body, right? But that's okay because... I want to know, right? And then I can fix it. So now we've got our physics body. Let's um, set the uh, the physics categories, right? So we'll say category bit mask equals physics category. That's our, our struct over here, right? And this is the deadly category, right? And then we'll say physics category got collision. And I don't want any collisions with this, right? So I'm going to say physics category... Uh, dot none for collisions, right? So there'll be no physical interaction, right? But I do want a callback. I want to know if this object hits another object, right? So for the contact test bit mask, this will be physics category dot player. Okay, so if the player contacts the deadly object, I want to know about it, right? So I got to do one more thing, right? The the Deadly object can contact the player, but I also need the player to be able to contact the deadly object. So here we're going to do something a little bit new. And what I've done is, is I've switched over to the player class, and I'm looking at the contact test bit mask right here. And you can see it says coin. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the bar. That means or, so it can be the coin, or it can be the deadly object. So what I'm saying here is that I have a contact, you know, or the player object can contact a coin or a deadly object. It can do both of those, okay? So there we go. So we got that. Now let's go back to uh, game scene. And then um, let's detect for a collision with the deadly object, right? So if you recall, you know, we detected a collision here with the coin, 
right, by saying collision equals coin or player, why don't we say else if collision equals physics category dot um, deadly object or physics category dot player. Okay, and then we'll print out a message here. We'll say, uh, you are dead. Okay. Maybe we'll make it a little more, um, a little more informative. We'll say, player contacted deadly object, you are dead. How about that? Okay, something like that. Okay, so now we just need to create a, a deadly object sometimes, right? Okay, so this will get us started in how we're going to create random, you know, landscape content, right? Okay, so if you recall, our landscape object, every time I'm switching over to the landscape class right now, so I'm in class landscape, right? And every time the landscape object is created, it creates a coin, right? So, you know, it creates a coin here. It could also create a deadly object, or maybe we could set it up so it creates a coin or a deadly object, one or the other, right? So why don't we do that? Well, let's change this a little bit. So um, we've got reset landscape, and we set the background color for the, uh, for the landscape section, and then we set the content node, or we called remove all children on the content node to remove everybody, right? So if there's any coins or deadly objects, they'd be gone. And then we created a new coin here, right? So let's change this a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of these print statements there. And then why don't we do this? Let's get a random number. Let's say, you know, let n equal, um, how about arc for random. I know some people out there are going to say arc for random. You should be using arc for uniform or some other randomizer. You know what? This is pretty random. You know, I know it's, Maybe not perfect, but but don't worry about it. This is good, and we could always go back and change this later, right? But I, I think that this one is, is sufficient for most of this stuff, right? Um, so anyway, let's say arc for random, and then we need a random number. Let's make it a random number between 1 and 0, okay? So it should be, you know, a range of, of 0 to 1 less than the value here, okay? And then what we'll do is we'll throw in a switch statement. And we'll say n, right? So if n has a value of 0, then we want to create a coin. We'll put a note in there. And then we'll do another case here. If n is 1, then we'll create a uh, deadly object, OK? And then we need to have a default in here because this random right here, it, even though we know it's only going to be 0 to 1, the switch can't, or the compiler's not going to be able to tell what the range of this is. So what we'll do is we'll put a default in there, and we can just make it break. Okay? What is this? Um, oh, yeah, I got to have a I gotta have a break statement in here, but we're actually going to fill this in. So, so these won't matter in a moment, right? Okay, so if we create a coin right here, or up here, right, why don't we just copy all of our code there? and paste it in here. And then we should work on this position a little bit, right? So we have to make sure our coins don't end up below the ground, right? So maybe maybe we should do this. We should say the y value is going to be the height minus um, a hun let's make it 80. I think the ground is 40 tall, right? So if we make this 80, the coins will have to be at least 40 above. And then what we'll do is we'll just do plus 40. Okay, so that's really should give us the range up to the top. Maybe we should do minus 100 and then do plus 40, right? And that should put us, you know, 40 up from the bottom and 20 down from the top, I think. My math is off. Anyway, that'll be okay. We'll, we'll test that out, right? So now let's make a deadly object, and we can follow the same kind of you know, arrangement that we had here, right? Why don't we say let deadly equal deadly object. You know what? I forgot. We got to give it, oh no, we made it red. I, f I forgot about the color of this, right? 
So, uh, so we'll make a deadly object. We'll say content node dot add child deadly object. Oh wait, we need lowercase deadly object, right? And then now we need a position. So let's say deadly object lowercase deadly object um, dot position x equals cg float and then we'll do arc for random and what we want to do is we want to get the width of the frame minus the width of our deadly object right so let's do uh, uint um, 32 uh, size dot width minus deadly object dot size dot width right and then we want to actually do plus the deadly object dot size dot width divided by 2. Okay? Because the reference point is in the middle. So I think that's what we want there. We want to get the get the width of the frame less the size of this thing and then get a random number somewhere in there and then subtract you know half the width to move it or add half the width to push it over so so it doesn't hang off the edge, right? Okay, so let's try that again. Deadly object position dot y equals cg float arc for random you went and then you know since arc for random is a uint 32 we got to make the number that we're going to randomize into a uint 32 right and then we'll do size dot height minus deadly object dot size maybe you know i got an idea why don't we actually just put the deadly object right on the ground so it won't actually be in the air floating like maybe it's on a ground on the ground we have to jump over it right so why don't we do this why don't we actually just change this and say you know our ground plane is 40 tall plus we need deadly object dot size dot height divided by two okay and uh, I think that looks pretty good. So let's give it a try. Uh, we might have to set the Z index or something, but it seemed like the coins were above everybody, right? So I think we're probably okay there. We can worry about the Z index later, right? We're just concentrating on the, uh, you know, the collisions right now. Oh, there. Look, we got a coin, right? So... Uh, Oh, look, contacted coin, right? There's another coin. We could make whole blocks of coins, kind of like in Jetpack Joyride or something, but we'll, we'll tackle that later, right? Now that we've got one coin, it's easy to make as many as we need, right? Oh, there's another one, right? So we scored another point there. Oh, wait, there's a deadly object. Oh, you are dead. So it seems to be working, right? And then, you know, we'll have to add something to actually end the game, right? Oh, wait. Oh, I just, oh, wait, I hit it. Oops. Okay. So anyway, so it seems to be working, right? Let's get that coin there. Oh, contacted the coin. So anyway, so there you go. I hope that that helped you out there. Um, maybe give you an idea of what's going on and see where you can take your game there. Give it a try on your own. Add another category of stuff maybe randomize how the objects are displayed. You know, we're going to talk about adding pictures later. I got to come up with some artwork, but anyway, um, thanks for watching.